Okay, so I'm Chris Garner with Horizon Realty Associates. I'm here today with my friend Jade Riles, who works with me at TPS Photography also, and uh, he set up this nice podcast room for us today. Jade is also going to be kind of sitting in as the public who has questions about real estate, about the state of the market around here, um, uh, things like that. He's going to ask some general questions. You know, a lot of the things I think about talking about in videos, I don't really know what to talk about sometimes because I don't know what the client and what the public really wants to know. So we're going to get some questions from him today and just talk about the general state of real estate in Burke County, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, was that fair? Yeah, that was fair. Okay. All right. We can just go from there then. Yeah. I wish, I wish we could collect a survey on what the public really wants to know. Yeah. Cause I know I'm, I mean, I can ask questions from what I assume people. Well, you're, you're, you're of the age that you would be a first time home buyer, right? So you're not like someone who's a retiree would yeah. want to know, but that doesn't mean in the future we can't bring a retiree in and talk about what are their plans if they want to downsize or what if it's a growing family who it's their second home and they bought their first home and then they're looking to upsize right mm -hmm. so um you know there's always it's interesting but but from what you know you can ask enough questions to yeah get us talking so yeah let's let's start there so i guess let's start with the real estate market in general okay. and where it's headed well the, yeah from my perspective as a 25 year old buying a house seems like 20 years away because it's just just the the home prices keep going up and my income doesn't right right so it's well that's the unfortunate part of yeah. your generation uh and it's really it almost seems unfair because you're exactly right i mean the the if you look at what the general income has been for people over the past 15 years or so, it has not gone up a lot. Whereas everybody knows what happened to home prices mm -hmm. over the last three or four years. Uh, they've absolutely skyrocketed. Um, and it's really unfortunate because, you know, you should be able to have a full-time job and afford a home, a car, and groceries, mm -hmm. right? And right now it's really tough for people in your situation. The people I see buying homes of your age, they're already married. They have dual income, you know, and they can bring something like that in. Whereas when I was your age, I had already owned a home for three years, mm -hmm. right? And it wasn't much of a house. You know, it was, uh, it was a little 900 square foot craftsman home with, you know, it had, it had air conditioning, but it didn't have much else, mm -hmm. right? You know, it was just very basic. Uh, my power bill was $550 a month in the winter because it was drafty, you know, like, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> yeah. but still, I, but even then I could afford that, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, my house payment was so low. My house payment was $405, right? $404.85, $404.85 cents was my house payment, which also included homeowners insurance and property taxes. Wow. Right. So all of that was, was in escrow. So I could afford that. Yeah. Um, I spend that on food in a month for right. just myself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, uh, not for, more. for my family of four to go to the grocery store now, it's, you're not getting out of there for under $300. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. Um, if you get everything you need, you know, and we find ourselves going to multiple grocery stores a lot. Uh, we'll get what we can at, at Aldi you know, or somewhere like that, because they've got a lot of stuff that we like, plus their prices are usually a little less expensive. But then that means we have to make another trip to another grocery store to get the stuff that we can't get there. Yeah. Um, but still, even even then, I mean, you know, I'm in my mid-40s. Uh, my kids are teenagers. Um, I've built a career now, dual careers. But I still find myself, and, and part of it's just me too, but I'm still... I still want to pinch pennies yeah, because you don't know what's around the corner and you don't, you know, you know. So, so for those, my, I guess I don't understand like what, what has driven home prices up so high? So I understand it's like the whole like supply and demand thing, mm -hmm. but I feel like the demand is going to go down because there's going to be 
Like, I just don't know how people can keep affording to buy. It's already gone down a little bit. Okay. Um, in this area? Or in like this area. Just, just a little bit. And like I said, it's it's not anything drastic. The housing market hasn't crashed. I don't see it crashing, right? Like, we're not going to have this huge, like, oh my gosh, uh, type situation. We will have a situation where people who have purchased homes at extreme prices uh once the housing market dips a little bit the equity in their home it could become negative Mm -hmm. right you know they've spent a fortune on this house that was severely overpriced or maybe and maybe it wasn't even overpriced they just went in way too hard on it and decided i'm going to pay over ask to make sure we get this house yeah and then there's going to be a time where they're not going to be able to sell that house for what they owe on it and that time might already exist right like they might have overpaid so much that they're not going to be able to recoup what they have in it. And if they can't, for some reason, if they can't make that payment, they're going to end up negative. I mean, I had a situation two weeks ago where uh, someone had to, in a home purchase, someone had to bring money to the closing attorney to sell their house. Right. Wow. So. So they lost money, essentially. They they brought a few hundred dollars to the closing attorney to sell their house. Yeah. It wasn't a ton of money, but still, it's not the way you want your real estate sale to go. Yeah. Um, so is it is it has it just been the demand factor? Like, there's just that many people who need a place to live that has driven the prices up, or is there other? No, there's multiple things. Number one is um, with interest rates being as low as they were a couple years ago, a lot of people were just refinancing and deciding to stay where they were um, because once the interest rates started going back up. They're like, well, I have I have this house at, you know, three percent interest. Why would I sell this and then buy another house that's going to be seven percent interest, seven and a half percent interest, whatever it might be? Uh, just doesn't make sense. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is with as soon as the COVID nineteen pandemic hit, everybody figured out really quickly that they can work where they are, mm-hmm. right? Like businesses were forced to come up with situations where their employees could work at home. Uh, Meetings were handled through Zoom or, you know, Google Meet or whatever it might be, Google, you know, Teams, Microsoft Teams. So businesses figured this out really quickly. And employees then figured out really quickly, I don't need to go into work every day, Mm -hmm. right? Like I can do my job from home. And a lot of businesses, myself included, were very hesitant of doing that before, but then figured out quickly that a lot of this work can be done from home. And not only that, systems were invented and put into place to make that more of a reality. So what's happened is people can do that anywhere, right? Like, so if if you, if you live in, um, I don't know, just outside of New York City and New Jersey. Your your crime statistics are fairly high in the in your area. Your taxes are astronomical in your area. Um it's it it's busy. You might want a slower pace of life, whatever yeah. it might be. And you look at a place like Western North Carolina mm-hmm. that's like, wow, okay, first of all, it's peaceful and quiet. Um my taxes could go way down. I have access to these beautiful mountains. I have access to clean lakes and rivers and streams. To I could see my kids growing up here, mm-hmm. right? Much more than I could just across the, so the people river. Are, people are keeping so, the job in New York. Yeah. And then moving here and yeah. having a lower cost. Yeah. Uh, I actually have a neighbor in my neighborhood who uh, moved here from New York. Wow. And... For that very reason, his office is now in the, uh, it's called the Frog, which is the finished room over garage, Oh, right? Yeah. So if you didn't know, uh, if you have a finished room over your garage, it's called a Frog yeah. in real estate terms, but yeah. <laughs> kind of lingo. But um, he, he that's his office and he, he can do everything he wants to do. Uh, Right there. And he's he's 100% a New Yorker, right? Like, his name's New York. His accent's New York. He he acts, walks, talks New York, but he lives in Morganton, North Carolina, works in New York, hmm. right? I mean, that makes sense. Like, yeah. 
got a young kid, you know, wants to wants to have a family here. Yeah. Um, not only that, his family has loved it so much; they're moving down also. Right. Yeah. So, and you know, we see that a lot too. Like I've, I have a family I work with uh, from New Jersey. Um, part of the family lived here. One of the other family members wanted to move down from New Jersey. I helped them find the house uh, to move down. And then next thing you know, they've got a friend mm. that wants to move down from New Jersey because they come and visit and they're like, this is great. Um, we've helped people from Seattle, Florida, Arizona. I mean, you name it, they're they're coming here. And some of them are retiring, but most of them are just keeping their job. They just can live here and, and work. I see. Yep. The housing, you do think the housing market is slowing down, but it's not bottoming out like there's no no it's not bottoming it out bottoming out at all and and i think it's slowing down you have um you have multiple things you have the interest rates are high so people aren't gonna buy as much because when the interest rate was below four percent and now you know sometimes depending on what loan you're getting it could be up to close to eight percent you know um that's a big difference and it compounds and a house that your principal and interest would be on a mortgage payment that used to be $1,200 is now suddenly $2,000, right? So it's it's really hard to, and those are just general. I'm just, I, I did not do the math on that, but I know it's, you know, that's just to giving you an idea. Yeah. Um, so that makes it a stretch to afford, right? Like you have to cut something out. Like what could you do with an extra $800 a month? Well, could probably buy two cars right you know yeah. or you know or a car and have plenty for groceries right yeah um so it just depends on um so there is a little bit of a slowdown there um also we i've, I've seen personally i've seen people really overpricing homes mm-hmm. um knowing it's, it's not a terrible strategy right like i i i subscribed if it's your house, get the most you can for it, right? I mean, why would you start out low just to, just to, unless you're really that into philanthropy that you just really want to help somebody out, which some people are. I mean, I've, I've seen situations where, you know, they'll, they'll understand that, well, this person really, you know, they really want this house. They're going to try to stretch to get this house. Uh, sellers understand their situation and they're like, okay, well maybe, maybe I'll give them a better break than I would Mm. someone else. You know, even though they're not supposed to know much about who's buying their home, some, some details can't be hidden. Yeah. Um, and then, but seller, you know, I, I don't, I don't disagree with the strategy of necessarily pricing high, but you better be able to sit Mm. for a while, right? Like you can't, you can't price your high, your, you can't price your house high knowing that you need to sell it in in a month because you're moving and you and you can't afford two mortgages Mm -hmm. you can't play that game but what you uh oh oh no we lost the light the light died so are we good now yeah so i I have a question i understand like as a seller obviously i would want to maximize the return on my investment my profit right but i also understand how that's going to make selling my home either a take longer or b it's not going to happen at that price, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one thing you mentioned was the seller's not supposed to know the buyer. Right. What does that mean? Okay, well, this is supposed to be very transactional, right? Like you're not supposed to, I mean, it's 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 a small town. A lot of people know a lot of people. So, you know, if a name comes across on an offer, it's like John Doe and Jane, Jane Doe you know, put in this offer to purchase this home from so-and-so, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's a small town. A lot of people know... Know each other in their mm-hmm. situations. Yeah, it just it just happens. Well, um, what, I guess, what are the rules on that? Like, There aren't any real rules. Oh. I mean, you just... If if you do know someone, the, the advice is to, like, don't talk to them through this process. You definitely don't want to, to um, show your hand on anything, right? Okay. Like... I see. I mean, even though you might know someone, it's you still want it, to. It's an arm's length transaction, is what it's known as. So that, you know that it's not like you're selling to a family member, right? Mm. You want to you want to keep it as distant as possible 
from personal things, right? Yeah. Like one thing uh, people used to do sometimes, it was really annoying, would be buyers would send love letters, is mm-hmm. what we call them, to the seller with their offers. So it'd be like, here's this offer, but here's a cover letter. Yeah. And this cover letter explains that, you know, it's usually some sort of sappy story about how they could imagine their kids playing in this yard yeah. Growing up that, you know, and they start to build this whole like narrative and the story. Appeal to the most emotion- emotional yes, side. Yes, yes. Appeal to the emotional side. You know, more, more recently, you know, I've had situations where, um, you know, we've been in like multiple offer situations and one offer might be from a, from a, a person and another might be from like an LLC. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. And if it's an investment property and this person that's selling the home might be emotionally tied to this home, mm. right? And they may feel themselves leaning more toward, you know, someone who's going to rehab it and try to try to build their family's life there versus someone who's going to, uh, you know, buy it, mm. fix it up slightly, flip it and try to make a profit. So, you know, so, so there are some telltale things, you know, most anybody it's, it's public information for the most part. Like you can typically, if you see a set of names, you can look up these people and find out yeah. enough about them. I mean, everybody can jump on social media and do it. You know, that's one of the first things I do when I'm, you know, that's want to find out something about someone is I'll jump on Facebook or Instagram and be like, oh, let's see if I can find this person. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would do. Like if I were, if I were selling a property, like I'm, I mean, heck, even when I sell stuff on like Facebook marketplace, right. I'm like, let's, you know, stalk in their profile. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Them. Yeah. Making sure. Yeah. You know. So, so it's, it's very hard to keep things anonymous. Mm. You know, it's very difficult, but, um, if you want to keep things strictly transactional and, you know, by the by the book you know it should be fairly anonymous yeah you know i guess it sounds like if the goal is to make it a transaction and to make it as you know i don't know like black and white yeah transactions always kind of like a a war almost right like it's it's one side pushing down one side pushing up yeah Mm -hmm. so if that's the goal then what you're saying is you don't want your seller or your buyer disclosing information that could like oh yeah for sure yeah that's that's kind of the whole goal yeah they're i mean yeah i mean as sellers and buyers the reason you hire a real estate agent in the first place Mm -hmm. is to be your go-between right Mm -hmm. to be your mediator to be to handle the tasks number one that you don't know how to handle Mm -hmm. number two make sure you don't do something that could hurt you right um I had a situation a couple of years ago where I went, this is my, uh, I mentioned that we had some people from, you know, a lot of people from out of town. These people were from uh, Washington state. Uh-huh. They, uh, they wanted to see a house and you don't see this as much now, but this was a sight unseen uh-huh. thing. So they were like, we want this house. We haven't seen it. And I said, well, at the very minimum, this was the most pressure I ever felt ever. Um, to give my opinion mm-hmm. of should I buy this house, right? Yeah. Uh, I, and I don't free, I would not, you know, I knew these people well. I, I gave them what I thought was a good opinion. But at the same time, I said, you know, I'm going to give you a walk there. We're going to FaceTime. We're going to go through this house. We're going to go through it, you know, uh, every little detail. We're going to do like a FaceTime showing, right? Mm-hmm. While you're a, across the country, right? But so I show up for the showing and the seller is there. Mm-hmm. And not only is the seller there, the seller is following me around and telling me all these details about the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which they think they're doing something helpful, right? But at the same time, they're showing their hand on a lot of things. Yeah, they're, they're trying to hype it up, but yeah. they might be. Yeah. And, and even worse, even worse, the seller says to me, well, we've already got, this, this was, okay, this was, so, this was in the height of like this crazy market you know two and a half years ago where people was houses were selling as soon as they went on the market you know and this was it had just gone on the market that day 
And he said, you know, we've already gotten two offers on this house. And can you believe one of them is $285,000? Or well, whatever, you know, yeah, right? so you know, I'm not I, throwing that number out. That's yeah, not the actual. You thing. already know exactly where you got to start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just given. And he, he's like, you know, he's excited. He's like, wow, I'm getting this yeah. amount of money. Right. But I mean, he just completely gave everything away. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we knew exactly where we needed to be to to beat this if that's what they wanted. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was a simple, it was a slam dunk. Yeah. Right. I feel so, like a lot of people don't even think about these things yeah. when going into. Unless they work in sales, you know, unless they're like a, they have a job that works in sales, mm-hmm. they're probably thinking about all these things. But yeah. I know a lot of people probably aren't. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people are, you know, and rightfully so, they're proud of what they have. Right. I know if I was to give, you know, showing at my own house, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember when this happened here and this happened here and this, this is what caused this and this is, where I did this and, you know, it's just, you know, you're kind of proud of what you've, you've done, mm-hmm. but you got to be careful not to have diarrhea at the mouth, I yeah. guess, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so, uh, but with that being the case, I will say, um, I will say with that particular situation that I, that I mentioned, um, they didn't, sometimes the highest offer is not the best offer. Mm-hmm. And uh, they actually got that one by not like jumping way over that price or something silly like that. We were able to craft some other things into that offer that made things more attractive to the seller, right? But we still knew where we still knew where we needed to be. You know? I want I want to circle back to that because in my mind, the only thing that you're offering is the price. Yeah, that's what most people think. Right? Yeah, so I want to circle back to that. Yeah, but. You said some stuff earlier on that I think we should touch on first before we get like too complicated. Okay. The, the offers to sure, of sure. real estate. Yeah. The offers of a real estate right. transaction. So you mentioned that like the reason you hire a real estate agent is to have that that go between. Sure. Like that, that person to represent you and help you. Yeah. Think about these things like, you know, not give away your hand, motivations. And obviously you highlighted that there's more to it than just the money. Yeah. Right. So. Well, um, money in different ways. Yeah. Yes. Not just, not just the bottom line. Okay. Offer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I want to go there for a second and just, cause I don't really fully understand it. I think a lot of people don't fully understand it, but what does a real estate agent do exactly? Mm-hmm. And I guess what are the details, those tasks that you mentioned that a, a person might not know how to do or B, not want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, what are those? And, you know, what are what are the the other things of the offer that are not just the bottom line, the money, that mm-hmm. can make a lower price more appealing to a seller? Okay. Well, um, as far as what an agent does, so, so the word agent kind of, you know, you are... A special agent is, 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 I mean, that's the, that's the literal legal term of what you're doing. Uh, you are, you are a special agent for the, um, for the buyer or seller. And what that means is you are doing a job, this specific job, I guess that's where special comes, right? It's, you are not a universal agent, right? You're not the person who, like, a you don't have power of attorney where you can, do everything for them, you are doing this specific task for them. So, you know, I mean, agents have the, we're plugged in, right? Like um, primarily through MLS, the multiple listing service. That's where we can, we we pay our dues, we subscribe, we we do our continuing education and all of this and, and, and we're plugged in and we can put your home on multiple listing service and you can't do that on your own, mm-hmm. right? So that's the big thing because it's getting in front of the eyes of thousands of people, thousands of other real estate agents. And not only that, a lot of these agents have buyers that they've set up on searches, right? Like they're scouring the MLS. And not only that, they have automated searches now um, where if certain criteria comes up, this buyer's agent has set it up to where it'll send them an email and ping them immediately like here's a house that ticks these boxes that you that you like right and so they'll know about it immediately and you're not i mean you 
you can't do that if you if you are trying to sell a house on your own. Um, now you can use like you know Zillow, right? Like you can put your for sale by owner on on Zillow or or uh, Redfin or Homes.com or whatever it might be. Okay. Um, but people who have set up those search criteria on Zillow might be notified of that, right? But it's not nearly as powerful as the multiple listing service. Um, so that's the first thing that an agent can do for you. Secondly is um, what marketing they can do for you, right? Like agents are usually tied into where they can, not only the MLS, but they can do, um, they'll have professional photography for you, professional videography, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, some agents don't do that, but the marketing of the home is very helpful. Um, but also the main thing is, is the contracts and the legal part of things. Uh -huh. Um, you know, a, a, a real estate agent can't give you legal advice, but they can definitely point you in the right direction and provide legal forms and contracts and things like that for you. Okay. Um, and give you advice on what you should and shouldn't do, what you should and shouldn't say, what this portion of this contract means, right? You know, explain things to you um, that can be very complicated otherwise. Okay. Yep. Where, so if someone didn't use a real estate agent, like where would they even go to get these forms? And to... Well, you can go to a, you can go to a real estate attorney okay. and get those, but um, you know, you can definitely get those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not, it's not like we keep them in a secret vault and that's the only it's the only way that you can obtain these, but you can definitely go to a real estate attorney. The problem is we go back to the marketing, right? So not only, let's say you do a stellar job of marketing your house yourself. Let's say you hire professional photography. Let's say you hire professional videography. Let's say you put up a billboard, whatever it might be, you know, mm -hmm. house for sale, what you know, run ads. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you might do. Yeah. But still what you're going to have to do is if you're selling your house, and a flood of people come in, you're going to have to show every single person that house, right? Yeah, you're going to have to keep a record of who called when they called. Well, not, I mean, yeah, you're just, info. but you're going to have to be there and walk them through the house and do all this. Whereas you don't just want like Joe Public off the street mm -hmm. walking through your house, yeah. right? Yeah. If you have a real estate agent, um, you know, and they put this on MLS, the only people gonna, that are going to be showing these houses are other real estate agents, mm -hmm. right? Who have have taken a, an ethical oath to not, you know, steal your grandmother's, whatever you have laid yeah. out. But that's a that's conversation for another day. We're not going to, I still recommend putting up your valuables and things like that, but because anybody could get sticky fingers, not the agent themselves, but the, you know, whoever's walking through there. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you have a trusted person showing someone your house, right? And you don't have to be there, right? They're gotcha. going to, you know, put there, you're going to have a lockbox on the door uh, that only the real estate agents can get the combination to things like that. So it just makes, makes your life a lot easier. Okay. Um, and, and the real estate agent's going to help you price your home. So you're not extremely overpricing it. So you're not extremely underpricing it, things like that. You know, there's, there's a multitude of ways that a real estate agent can help you as a buyer or a seller. Um, as a buyer, you're not going to be able to get into a lot of these homes unless you're working with a real estate agent. You know, so um, if you're looking to buy a house, you can't just call up and be like, hey, I saw your house on Zillow. Can can you show me through your house? You know, it's, you could, but it's not the way to, to do it. Yeah. Right. Are you able to call like, Let's say I don't, let's say I'm a buyer and I don't have an agent mm -hmm. representing me. Am I able to just call the listing agent of a home and be like, hey, I want to see this house? Yeah, completely. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, at that point, that listing agent, if you were to enter into an agency agreement with them, they become a dual agent, right? Okay. That presents a whole other set of set of issues. But do, you, do you have to enter that before they're able to show you the home? No, not, not, not really. But it is going more and more and more toward that. Okay. Um, and it's a good idea to to have some sort of agreement. Um, now, the first thing, they, they do have to give you a working with real estate agents uh, information sheet and go over that with you and let you know 
what you should and shouldn't say to a real estate agent, especially if they're the listing agent on a home, right? Because th at that point in time, their fiduciary duty or their responsibility lies 100% with the home seller, mm -hmm. right? So anything you say yeah. can be used against you, yeah, right? And so you have, to, you have to understand that if you call the listing agent. But at the same time, if you enter into an agency agreement with that listing agent, that listing agent, as long as the seller of the home is okay with them doing this, they can be a dual agent. Now, dual agency can get a little sticky. Like you have to literally, in your mind, you know, a person has to put like an iron wall up between sides. You cannot pass communication of any sort, you know, Same. back yeah. and forth across this boundary. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that feels like it would get really complicated. It can, but it it can also go very smoothly. You yeah. know, it just depends on the situation. Uh, I've turned down several opportunities for dual agency because I knew there would be some complications, um, or or I foresaw that there might be some complications due to certain circumstances. And at that point, I'm glad to refer a buyer to someone else in my firm. Mm -hmm. um, because we can that at that point it's called designated dual agency. If you if you have someone um, working with someone else in your firm, mm -hmm. it's still a for, a form of dual agency, but it's not dual agency, right? So, for example, um, Rebecca, my wife, she is also a real estate agent, mm -hmm. right? We both work for the same real estate firm. We have had situations where she has a seller and I have a buyer, or I have a seller and she has a buyer. And at that point, we kind of joke about it because, you know, it's like this like this big iron curtain comes down between our sides of the bed, right? Yeah. And we can't. So you're just not, yeah, you're like, so we can't talk about it. You can't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we cannot yeah. talk about it. And we kind of, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll like pick at it and be like, so, you know, what about this? And she's like, shut up. I can't tell you that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, so we, it's kind of fun for us. We, we, we kind of play this little game in our own heads about make sure you do not more so than we would with another agent, right? Do not disclose anything at all. Right. So, um, what so, is what, so real quick, what is, what is a real estate firm? Okay. So a real estate firm is, uh, it, it's a business essentially with real estate agents under it. Okay. Uh, inside the firm, you'll have a broker in charge, which is the like the head broker, right? Like that, they're the person that um, they kind of handle the the ins and outs of the okay. firm. It's required for a real estate firm um, that that has other uh, people involved to to have a broker in charge, mm -hmm. right? And then everyone else is just you know uh, an agent within that within that brokerage. So if you're, as a real estate agent, do you have to belong to a firm or can you just be like yes. independent? No, you have to, you have to belong to a firm. Why is that? Uh, well, it depends on if you're, if you're, you know, acting or practicing or not. So, I mean, you can be a real estate agent in North Carolina and pay the North Carolina Real Estate Commission $45 a year and that's it. But you cannot even tell someone you're a real estate agent. Right. So why why do you have to be a part of a firm to it's it's well it's the rules. Oh. <laughs> uh you have to you have to in order to be your own and you can be your own firm. Yeah, I guess you can be your own like, firm. I, sure. Yeah. You could be yeah, so to so to clarify, you can be your own firm, but you also have to be a broker you have to be your own broker in charge. What's what is uh I guess what is that title broker in charge? How does that differ from a real estate agent? Like what is well, most brokers, most brokers in charge are also real estate agents, right? Okay. But they have they have more responsibilities as well. Anything that goes on within that firm uh, that an agent may do ultimately falls on them as well. Just kind of like a like a boss, right? Gotcha. To some degree, they also are. You know, they're they're they have to do different. Um, continuing education type things they have you know honestly i'm not a broker in charge i can't speak to it uh -huh. as much as uh, as a broker in charge could yeah you know i'm just telling you from um 
from my perspective, you know, and, and at some point in, in real estate school and all this, I learned the exact, you know, bullet list of what yeah. a broker in charge does. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a broker in charge. I don't really have a desire to be guess, at this point in time. So, yeah, I guess my question is like when I, when I think about a real estate agent and when you to describe to me the job that a real estate agent does, which is a lot, like, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about trying to list a home myself like i mean you gotta put it on zillow put it on all these different things oh yeah the photography yeah. done the video yeah. done yeah. like you know it's you know it's like hiring hiring anything yeah you know, sure it's a compression of time mm -hmm. but it feels like it's something that's like a you know kind of a freelance role like you're an individual mm -hmm. so i guess what is what is the the reasoning behind all real estate agents having to belong to a business, belong to a firm, like, is that protecting them? Is it protecting the, you know, the public? Like what's, it, what's the just rule? about, just about anything is put in place in North Carolina to protect the public. Okay. Got you. Yeah. So, so. So because your, your firm is, they're the ones that's kind of like keeping tabs. On yes. Making sure you're not. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So. So just about just about anything that is part of real estate law in North Carolina is centered around protecting the public. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm I mean I'm assuming you said the firm is a business. So how does the firm itself make money from Well, the firm is is whenever so if you are to um if you were to enter into an agency agreement you enter into that with the firm itself, okay. Not the not the you person, not right okay. now. There is as a as a real estate agent, you are qualified to do this on behalf of the firm. Okay, all I right. Yeah. But but whenever like let's say let's say you're selling your house, mm -hmm. right? And you and I um, sign a listing agreement to sell your house. You are signing that with Horizon Realty Associates, not with me. Not not Chris Gardner. I'm qualified to sign on the dotted line on behalf of Horizon Realty Associates, but you are signing that with the firm, okay? Not with me. Okay. Okay, and it, it can get really complicated. Let's say, I mean, but for that reason, I mean, the simple reason is, what if I decide, I mean, what if I decide I'm not going to do real estate anymore, mm -hmm. right? You're still, what if, what if I have a, you know, what if I have a terrible car accident and and I, I'm incapacitated oh, and I can't I see. So then Horizon would supply yes, exactly a, right and a, another agent. Yes, yeah. exactly right. Okay. So so you're signing that with the firm now. You know a lot of people you know have a misconception that the real estate agent is getting paid directly from. You know the commission that the seller would pay or the buyer would pay or whoever's paying the commission, but that's not the case at all. You, the commission's paid to the firm, and then the, and then the real estate here. agent gets a split or a percentage of that commission based on their agreement with the firm. So that's, that's where, that's where the firms make money. It's yes. Their, yeah. They get, they get a port. The top and yeah, they, sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. So that brings up another question is when I see all these different agents, right? It's not a like, you know, and I guess it's kind of like car sales a little bit. Like it's not, it's, it's like, it's like, you know. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Like it's well, not well, like. I mean, the general public has this idea that real estate agents are kind of like used car salesmen in a way, right? Yeah, it's. And it, it's unfortunate yeah. because unfortunately, you know, there are some who have operated in, and, and, you know, I know some used car salesmen who are great upfront ethical people, but there's this whole stigma around like, you know, shady used car sales. Yeah. Well, I guess what I, the picture I'm painting is like when you go to buy a new car, it's not Ford is not like pick us. This is how we differ from Volkswagen, right? Right. Like when you when you roll up to the car dealership lot, like you're almost getting competed over from within. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Like, it's like yeah. It's, it's like, like every rep, every yeah. salesman they have is competing. I always you. wonder like how how do they pick who goes out to the lot and talks to you? Like do they yeah. have a, do they have a like oh you went and talk to these last people it's my turn right yeah and when you when i when i see real estate agents marketing themselves it's always like that individual brand not like a not not a pick 
Remax or pick Horizon or pick, mm -hmm. you know, whoever. It's like a pick me kind well, of thing. So Yeah, cuz you're you're your own business, right? Even though you work for someone, it's still your you're still essentially a self-employed individual, right? Got it. Okay. Um but I mean, now there is firm marketing that you'll see. Uh, we have billboards mm -hmm. in Morganton that just say Horizon Realty Associates, and they have a picture of all you know, eight of us that are in the firm, or nine of us now. I can't remember. Yeah, you know, I think nine, but um, all of us, you know, all of our faces are up on the billboard. Got you. And you know, and the firm pays for that, gotcha. right? But as far as individual marketing, that's that's on you, right? Yeah. And you pay for that. So are there things that like? So there's brand awareness, right? Yeah, yeah. So is there so it's kind of like brand awareness? Is there different things? Because I see real estate agents trying to differentiate themselves and offering, you know, different incentives and different things, but I never see the firm marketing. Like well, that's a, because the firm a well, global a global uh, thing. I w I will say there is a there is a firm in this area who heavily markets themselves as a firm based on their marketing, right? And, yeah. And they'll, and they, because the, a lot of the marketing they handle intra-firm, like everybody subscribes to, uh, like all the agents are doing very similar things that mm -hmm. the firm lays out. You do this, 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 and this, right? Mm -hmm. So that exists, but mo most of the times it's the individual agents that are going out on a limb and doing their own marketing. Got gotcha. you. Know, and in you, their in their own way, the individual agents have the flexibility to come sure. up with sure different things. Yeah, to, sure. To offer to because their ultimately, you know, ultimately, what it comes down to is it's it's up to each individual agent if they're going to mark. You know, it's out of their pocket. Yeah, right. For the most, or it's not necessarily out of their pocket, but it's either out of their pocket or their time spent. Yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. time or mm -hmm. okay. Yep, that makes sense. Um, so speaking of that. What, I guess, what differentiates you from other realtors and, you know, um, Rick, why would, why oh, would before you, we go, why before would we go there. Me? Yeah. Like why, before we go to, why would I, why would I pick you? Yeah. Um, let's go, let's, let's back up a bit to that, that other question I had okay. which was, you said the, oh, the, the high, highest offer highest isn't always, best. isn't always best. Yeah. Like we came in with a lower number sure. and they picked us. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Okay, like what, well, there's what else is in that offer? But yeah, there's all money. sorts. Of, there's all sorts of things. So, uh, I mean, this could be a long conversation. But um, so you have your purchase price. That's the simple thing, right? Like you would think, like, okay, let's say someone offers three hundred thousand, someone offers two hundred ninety thousand, and someone offers three hundred ten thousand. Yeah. Well, the three ten looks like the obvious winner. Right? Yeah, yeah. But let's say that three ten is FHA financing, right? And so what that means is you're going to have a very stringent appraisal mm. that will nitpick this place apart, right? And not only that, if it doesn't appraise for that amount, they're not going to get their financing, mm -hmm. right? But let's say someone comes in at 290 with cash. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 almost guaranteed you, you don't have to go through the the appraisal process. You don't have to um worry is the is it going to appraise for that amount cuz gosh, what if the house appraises for 280? Right. So you can make an offer on a home before you have the financing. Mm, no, you'll no. Yes and no. You need to be pre-approved. Okay, pre-approved. Right. You need from your from your lender, from whoever you're getting this loan from, you need to have a pre-approval or a pre-qualification saying that you can't afford that. Okay. Right. But that's not like a set in stone. No. Here's no, I've money. seen I've seen them fall apart. Okay. okay. Yeah. I've seen them go terribly wrong. Okay. Uh, no, I was confused for a second. Cause yeah. I was like, Wait a second. People are offering it's not, they've not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They've, they've gotten pre-qualified or pre-approved that, for that amount. That's like a, hey, you're most likely going to get this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a pre-qualification is, is stronger than a pre-approval. Um, They do a little bit more of a deep dive okay. into, uh, into your finances and things like that. But um, well, speaking rabbit holing again speaking of this day is that something a real estate like i'm assuming that's a loan officer right yes or someone like that a bank yeah. mm -hmm. does 
if I know nothing about any of this, you are you as a real estate agent able to help me find those people? Do you have those connections? Yeah. Or is yeah. that another, another, you know, is it like I'm building a house and I got to go get the framer? Yeah, no, the no framer, you better you get the you, electrician. Your real estate agent, if any, if they're plugged into anybody, it, it had better be some mortgage lenders. Yeah. yeah. To help to help their agents, you know, or to help their uh, to help their buyers. Are you guys, as an agent, are you able to like negotiate with loan officers and other people to like get kickbacks? No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> no, that's that's the most shady thing ever. <laughs> no, if no. I'm keeping. No, I'm not saying that it that that it doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, that's no. And, and as a matter of fact, I mean, I make sure and give. I mean, I'm supposed to, but I make sure I dot all my I's and cross all my T's. Hey, here's this name, this name, and this name. Yeah. And we're going to kind of document somehow that, that I that I did not, oh, you need to talk only to this person, right? Yeah. Um, now, there are, I mean, just like anybody else, there uh, there are businesses, uh, mortgage lenders that, that I know will do my clients a solid, and I prefer them personally, right? Yeah. But you're not allowed to have like an agreement with them where it's like every no, client I bring gosh, you, no. you give me fifty bucks or something. No, no, like I said, I'm not. We talked about the used car salesman. Yeah, stuff like that happens. I know it happens. I've heard of it happening. Right. Okay. Like I know, I know an inspector, a home inspector, and he is one of the most upfront, forthright people that yeah. you would ever meet. And he was approached by an agent when. When the pandemic hit, never nobody knew what was going on, right? And this agent was really scared of what was going to happen. It was their livelihood, right? And and this this home inspector was approached and said, you know, the agent had had the guts to say, you know, if you'll give me some really good inspections, meaning maybe if you overlook this or something like that, oh for, yeah, you know, maybe if you don't tell my buyers about yeah. this or something like that, if you. If you give me some really good inspections, I'll give you exclusive business. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. And this inspector, who I use a lot, said, no, and I will never inspect another home for you again. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so there there are people in there that, you know, and, and you've got the, you like the old boys club and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, oh, yeah, they'll you need to use this contractor. You need to use this inspector. You need to use this electrician. You need to use this mortgage lender right you know and i'm sure there's some under the table stuff going on there but gotcha. you know but no it's not okay no absolutely not yeah well all right backing up out of the rabbit hole okay where we're, we're, we're talking about pre-approval and pre-qualification yeah those are different well yeah let me um sorry i'm gonna cut right there a second okay because i did say that pre qualification is stronger than pre-approval and I want to make sure that that's correct because I get those confused. Okay. Are we still recording over here? Yes. A little red thing on the screen. Yeah. Oh, I had it wrong. Pre-approval? Pre yeah. Okay. Yeah, pre-approval. Yeah, and and I think in my mind... Um, pre-qualification sounds, sounds better. More, yeah, yeah, that's what sounds... I'm saying. So... Uh, Approval sounds loose. Qualification. Yeah, it like does, and I think like that's I think really that's where I, I think that's where I get it mixed up. Um, let's see. Yeah, oh, yeah I had it wrong. Yep. Yeah. So, pre-qualification sounds. I get that confused because it sounds very. That sounds like you qualified something. Right. Like you actually. You <laughs> yeah, you qualified. You qualified for the race, right? Like, yeah, like approval is like official, a... and approval is like, oh, you might, you might, uh, yeah, 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 but you might, but no, that's all wrong. So pre-approval comes with. A lot, a deeper dive into your uh, debt to income. You know, they're going to do like a, a harder credit pull uh, and stuff like that. Whereas the pre qualifications just kind of a loose, even though it sounds to me more official. It's a loose, like yeah, you're you're approved or you're 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 qualified. That's so confusing. But I do want to say, you know, I mean, that's I mean, these. I'm a real estate agent. That's a little bit outside my toolbox. I do expect and and suggest that my clients do not take everything from me when it comes to like mortgage lending or I go talk to the mortgage lender they're yeah. the, they're the experts there but you're there to help them you point them in the right direction well sure yeah so absolutely to, yeah you know yeah i mean I'm, i mean obviously along the way you learn some tips and tricks you know to help them out but 
uh, just like, you know, that's that's not my area of expertise. Go talk to the mortgage lender, right? Gotcha. So we were talking about what's the difference in the offers yeah, beyond sure. just the bottom line. So yeah. the type of financing is one. Yep. Um, that's a that's a big one. That's a big one. That's, yeah. a, that's a huge one. If you if you can come with cash, I mean, you're coming hard. Yeah. Right. Like you're yeah. you're you're taking so much off the seller's plate, mm-hmm. so much worry. Right. Like mm-hmm. they they do not have to worry if if you're gonna uh, have any financing issues, and that's a big thing. I mean, I've seen multiple situations just crumble because of financing issues. Right. And that seller, what they've done is they've given up their time, their time on the market, their time to do all these different things, right? And the big thing is their time on the market, right? Like mm-hmm. their house could have sold to the very next person that saw it, but you they went under contract with this. And they could have right? turned down, they could have turned down like 290000 cash to go for the 310 financing. And then, and then and it then, pulls and then, through. Either that or, I mean, what if the house doesn't appraise? Yeah. And that person. Then they're already. at the point of, well, do we drop the price to that or do we try to negotiate and meet in the middle or, yeah. you know, or do we just say we're not dropping the price? And at that point, the buyer can walk away, right? Because the buyer's going to come up with a difference. Yeah. If the seller's like, well, I'm not dropping the price. This is what we agreed on, right? Well, they're not going to get a loan for that amount. They're only get a loan, going to get a loan for up to what the appraisal said. Gotcha. Well, so what else, besides the financing, mm-hmm. what else can you? Well, you have, uh, we've talked about in some of our other videos, we've talked about due diligence money and earnest money. Yeah, re- right. remind me, due diligence money is... So due diligence, is, it became in North Carolina during when, when there were so many multiple offers on these properties, it became a very big marketing chip, or not marketing chip, a uh, 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 like incentive. Incentive, yeah. So due diligence is money paid from the buyer directly to the seller. It goes nowhere but directly to them. And it is completely non-refundable unless the seller's in breach of contract somehow. Right. So, so they were pay that and then back out. Like they still just gone. They keep it. So it's it's basically saying, here is money for you to take this house off the market. Okay. Right. Got you. It's like a- and for me to do my due diligence. That's right. Like hardcore, so core. I really want this house. I really want this house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, here's your money, right? Like, please, here's your money. Yeah. Right? Here's a down payment. Yeah. Here's a down payment, and and it is. I mean, it is. It is a down payment. It's not like additional money. Right? Okay. It's, it's credited it does come back. Out of the, the as long as the price. as long as the transaction closes, yes, it it, it is credited back to the buyer. Okay. So, you know, um, I had I have a friend. Uh, who's a real estate agent in Raleigh. And there was a story of, and this this is the craziest thing ever, but there was a house that was for sale. It was $350,000. I'm pretty sure, you know, this might not be exact, but it was $350,000, which in, in Raleigh is not going to get you a ton, yeah. but it was $350,000. And someone put down $300,000 in due diligence money. Right? mm mm-hmm. That's, so that's like that is a no brainer. Yeah. You pick this offer. That's almost right. The whole, the whole yeah, whole because thing. It, because if if you and that, that's when you know this house had like eight ten offers, right? Well, they're gonna take that one because if anything falls apart, they have three hundred thousand dollars that they just put it back on the market, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, um, so due diligence. You know, I haven't heard any stories of anything that, that wild would be crazy. around here. You yeah. just got a free three hundred thousand yeah. right. and kept your house. Right. Right. <laughs> So you could double, you could double it. It's, uh, yeah. Um, you could listen. I mean, the person submitting that offer better be really freaking sure. Yeah, they're gonna, you know, but they couldn't find a house, right? I mean, Raleigh's market was way wilder than it was here. Yeah, I would feel yeah. so bad if I was the seller. Yeah, well, like I would, yeah. I'd have to give it back. Yeah. I think I don't think I could morally. Well, they do. Oh, you are talking about if something happened? Yeah, if someone if someone paid three hundred thousand like up front, and then like yeah, that's up to you. It's you. It's you yeah. gifting them money at that point, but. I couldn't do it. I couldn't yeah, keep it. I don't know. I'd keep 100 at least. No. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you got to, I mean, you do it in that particular time. Yeah. You, I mean, and, and people do give due diligence money back. Yeah. I, like sometimes, you know, stuff happens. And I had a situation not long ago where someone was like, um, you know, the due diligence money, yes, it's not refundable, but somebody hit a situation where they were like, Oh gosh, this is not going to work out. It was it was a bad, you know, 
it ended up working out, mm. but they were afraid that they wouldn't, that it wouldn't. And the seller was actually like, just reassure them and let them know that I'm going to give them their due diligence money back. So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, when it came down to it, yeah, I'd probably want to, you know, my heart would say give it back also. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you got to, I mean, look at what you might have missed out on. Yeah. Right. Look yeah. at what you, you know, but there's no guarantee of them getting that back. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a, that's, that's a super strong offer. So, like I said, nothing quite that crazy I know of happened around here, but people were doing, you know, $5,000, $10,000 in due diligence money as an incentive. Like, if you have an apples to apples offer or really close to apples to apples offer, if you're only like $5,000 off between mm -hmm. two offers and one is offering you $10,000 in due, due diligence money mm -hmm. and one's offering you $2,000 in due diligence money, mm -hmm. that's so much stronger, mm -hmm. right? Because so that's that's a big way that you can turn screws on offers. Um, earnest money is another form of down payment, and to me, it's a really weak form of down payment. I don't even. Uh, it's held in escrow in, by in a trust account by usually by the closing attorney. Um, now some firms used to hold that, but uh, more and more, it's the closing attorney will hold that in a trust account. And you have a due diligence period, and if the buyer backs out during that due diligence period, which is usually two, three weeks sometimes, mm -hmm. they get that earnest money back. Mm -hmm. So, but then if it's after the due diligence period, the seller keeps the earnest money. Okay. Um, I don't, <clears throat> it's just a little bit weaker. I don't think you can really like juice up an offer with earnest money a lot of times. Yeah. Um, also, you know, uh, if it, I mean, the big thing, like I said, is cash. Also, that there's no contingencies or uh, no additional things that you're trying to throw in. Like, a lot of people ask for sellers to contribute to their closing costs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to make your offer stronger, you don't do that, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you want to, um, if you want to make your offer stronger, you can try. A lot of times you're handcuffed with this with financing, but you could try to also move your closing date up, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, lot sooner. Or, or, you know, I've had situations where sellers wanted a later closing date. So you can find flexibility with them to meet them where they're at. And, and when do you want to close? Oh yeah, we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, that's another thing. Um, also making sure, you know, you're not, you're not, Nickeling and nickeling and diving them on uh, personal property, right? Like, oh, here's my offer, but I want I want to keep this, 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 and this, right? Like, I want your refrigerator, uh, which is fairly common. I want your washer dryer, which is somewhat common. Uh, but I also want the quilt that your grandmother made, <laughs> right? That you have hanging on the end of the bed, and I want your your uh, dog's food bowl because it looked really cute, you know. Some people will throw weird stuff in like that. And that's just, that makes your offer weaker and weaker. That, that was going to be, a, that was another question I had. Is like, where, where's the line drawn with like the personal property that's in the house? Well, I mean, it's, everything's negotiable, oh. right? Like, so you could sell everything with the house. You can. Absolutely. I have a, I have a listing right now that the seller wants to sell everything with a house. I'm assuming that ups the price. Mm, it can or cannot. Okay. You know, it just depends on, it depends. Yeah. Right. Like. I mean, what is valuable to you in your mind may not have any value. Just it may actually have negative value to someone else. Could be right? a problem, yeah. Yeah, it could be a problem. They be well, look, you get all this stuff. Well, I don't want all that stuff, and not only that, I'm going to have to move all that stuff. Yeah, I got to pay someone to get rid of it. Right. Yeah. So, okay. so you know, it's a pro, and it could be a pro, could be a con. But I'm assuming things like new appliances or like oh yeah, stuff that's like huge. That, yeah, those are good yeah, value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Things and that everyone has to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything can be. I mean. Uh, anything can be offered, right? Yeah. Like anything, like, like, um, buyers can offer anything to sellers. Yeah. Right. Like here's this price, this price. Oh, and here's, uh, here's two tickets to Disney world. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. Anything's that's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, and, and sellers can do the same thing sometimes. Like, uh, like I, you know, I have a seller who sold a piece of land and with that, they offered a set of house plans, which are not cheap, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like professionally drawn house plans. 
you may not want to use those house plans. Yeah, you might but, not like that house. Plan. And so it's it's like the furniture. You know, it, it might be completely worthless to you, but at the same time, it could be very valuable to you. It could save you a lot of money if you love that house plan. Yeah, you know, or it may even spark some ideas. Maybe you don't want this exact house plan, but maybe you can take some ideas from it. Um, so there's no there's no um, there's no real. It is a little bit of the Wild West, but you don't really see stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like like outside the box kind of things. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, I guess really either way, whether you're buying or selling, it's a really complicated process. It can be. Yeah, yeah it can be very simple also. But you you don't know you don't know that it's complicated until you're there. Yeah. Right. Like sometimes it's so simple, right? Yeah. Like sometimes it's like, I don't even know why. I mean, sometimes I see transactions and I'm like, that that was the easiest thing ever. And then, yeah. and then I'm like, sometimes I don't even know, like you get this imposter syndrome sometimes, like what did I even do? Right. Yeah. Like, I, you know, but then, but then you get the complicated ones and you're like, Oh my gosh. You're putting out fires. Like, I could not imagine what someone would have done on their own in this situation. Yeah. Right? Like, so. I'm just thinking about it from like a time and steps perspective. Like if I'm selling a home, I got to know a photographer. I got to know. Well, you, don't, you don't have to do any of that, right? Well, yeah. But is, what is, yeah. you know, in a poor market where the demand's not really high. Well, so, like, so that's, well, that brings up a great point because at one point in time, not too long ago, things like photography, videography, they, they didn't matter because houses, and we, and we even had a situation a couple weeks ago that before we could even release a video, the house is under contract, mm. right? So that, yeah. that happens, but as things shift and they seemingly are shifting a little more to a buyer's market, yeah, and eventually they will. I mean, it's just it's just life. I mean, right? Like the stock market, is, is, the stock market is never always a bull market, yeah. right? Like yeah. it, it 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 does cycle, so. Uh, so as it transitions a little more to a buyer's market, it's very important for the seller to have solid marketing, mm -hmm. right? But you don't have to do anything. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. But yeah. um, just thinking about it, it's like it just seems like a lot of steps to take. Like I know a photographer. Hopefully that person can do the video too. Right. I can't. You right. Know, a videographer. Right. Then you got to know a loan officer. Then yeah. you got to know a, a real estate attorney. Right just yeah and then you and whoever you're whether you're buying or selling the other party involved i'm assuming you have to agree upon that real estate attorney right yeah so so with that part i'm not even gonna give a stat but a lot of times out of most i'll say that um one closing attorney handles everything for both sides okay the buyer uh the buyer will pick what attorney they want to use and then the seller just for the ease of everything it's nice to keep everything under one roof mm -hmm. you know and 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 with one team this the but you you can use separate ones? you can use like separate. if i'm like i'm absolutely not using that person oh yeah absolutely and i've seen that happen two different ways one is i'm absolutely not using that person yeah. right like they have a personal issue with that attorney um or uh i have i have a uh my uncle is a real estate attorney. Hmm. So even though I could use this attorney, he's going to do it for me absolutely free, and I trust him 100%, so I'm going to use him as well. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. How does that work? So I'm assuming then the two attorneys have to yeah. work together. Yeah, it just, it just it complicates things a little bit. Okay. Not not dramatically, yeah. right? Like it's I don't I don't exactly know what they do for the real estate transaction. Do we want to go there? Uh or is that complicated? I'm not a lawyer. Okay. So, uh, again, that's a little outside my toolbox. No, I, I mean, I know the basics of what they do, like, you know, a title search and, and things like that. But they make sure that the house is actually marketable and sellable, right? Okay. They make sure nobody else has, like, claim to that property and, you know, but they're- An inheritance or something? Well, yeah. I mean, even if it's- I mean, I had a situation not long ago that I heard about, not, not me personally, where- uh and a strange spouse pops up and is like, hey, I mm. still... I own 50%? Yeah, I still own part of that property. You can't sell it, right? So yeah. um, situations like that. but um, Or, you know, that there's there's an un unknown lien on the property or something like that. 
Um, what does it mean? Know, well, liens where there's money owed. Okay. Uh, for one thing or another, it might be on the property itself, or it might be uh, so and so did this work to the property, however long ago, and it was never paid for. So they put a lien on the property, meaning that once the house sells or the property sells, they get paid first before the uh, the buyer or before the seller gets paid. Right? It comes out of the seller's proceeds. I see. Yep. So uh, an attorney will do a lot of that searching and things like that. But um, yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly every step that they do. But you can use you can use a separate attorney if you want. Um, the buyer usually picks the attorney. The seller usually just goes along with it. It's nice to keep everything under one roof in one night, you know, tidy little package. What does the buyer usually pick? Well, the buyer's um, in a in a position to pick, right? Like I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna buy this house, and this is the attorney I want to use. It's actually in the contract. Uh, I mean, I guess they are the ones bringing the money, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I take that back. There, it's not in the contract who the closing attorney is going to be. It's in the contract who the escrow agent. Is going to be which we talked about uh, earnest money earlier. Yeah. So earnest money is that's is a put separate into an escrow account. No, no, oh. not use no, no. It's usually one in the same. Okay. Usually one in the same. So in the contract, it'll say who is the escrow agent. Well, the escrow agents, whoever is holding the earnest money in trust, essentially. And now more than it used to be. A lot of times, out of most, most times out of a lot, I guess I should say it's the closing attorney, right? So so the closing attorney. The buyer usually traditionally picks the closing attorney. The seller, more often than not, just goes along with that, mm. right? Like, I mean, it's a it's an attorney in the state of North Carolina is not going to put their license on the line to, you know, somehow screw over a seller with yeah. the state, right? Yeah. Like, there sense. you can trust them, right? Yeah. So. The only the only times I've seen that not happen is when they absolutely personally despise that attorney, right? Maybe they handled a, their spouse in a divorce ten years ago or yeah. something, right? Yeah. Or or they have a, a family member that they you know hey they're going to do it for free. Seller doesn't hardly pay much to an attorney, you know, a uh, few hundred bucks usually. So it just depends on depends on the attorney, but. I guess, yeah, who, you know, talk to me, I guess, about why, not why you're in real estate, but who do you want to serve in real estate? What different, you know, why, how are you different from other realtors? How is your firm, is your firm different from other firms? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I mean, our our firm is not different from all other firms, but it's different from a lot of other firms. What makes you unique? um, That sort of thing. Yeah. So, well, I'll start with the firm. So our firm is essentially a boutique firm, like. We're not a we're not a uh, a franchise like you know some some firms are nationwide like you see uh, Caldwell Banker uh, Remax Century Twenty One things like that right so and there's nothing wrong with that at all but they're they're essentially um, branches the local uh, offices are are small pieces of a larger organization which actually has you know some advantages right for agents there uh, they have a little bit stronger ties into uh, some continuing education type things. They have a little, they're, they definitely have better brand marketing, mm-hmm. right? But um, there's pros and cons. Uh, and and I personally, our firm, Horizon is, Horizon Realty Associates is a boutique firm, right? Like it's, we're one off. The only Horizon Realty Associates in the world exists in Morganton, North Carolina, yeah. right? And and you can count all of our agents on two hands, right? Uh, we're like a little family, right? Like so, so, and I like that atmosphere. Uh, not that that doesn't exist in the larger firms, but um, but what I like is I, I like I like the fact that my broker in charge, I can go to her at any point in time, and she's free to talk to me. If she's not free, she'll call me right back about this, 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 and this. I've got a broker in charge. I know I can rely on, mm-hmm. right? Um, I like the, I mean, I'm a small business kind of guy. It's what I've always known. So I like the small firm type uh, feel. Um, we're all we're all really good friends. We're not we're not competing with each other in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we have some really good agents, and I'm very very happy to pass off uh, clients to them. And I trust doing that because a lot of times, you know, um, I focus primarily on selling 
homes, selling land, selling real estate. Uh, I don't necessarily have the time to devote to buyers all the time. So I know that I can definitely do my buyer clients a better service by referring them to someone else other than my firm. Gotcha. And I know and trust those people in my firm. Helping a buyer takes long that takes longer than helping a seller, or is it because the the tasks themselves are different? No, it's not to... not necessarily. Not necessarily. Sometimes a buyer knows the property they want and you just go in and help them and it's and it's a lot easier than selling a home yeah. sometimes. But but a lot of times I have, you know, I have buyers who come to me through word of mouth or, mar- you know, they are, they see me in, in marketing or video, whatever it might be. And I'm happy to help buyers. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not ad- adverse to that is that the right word. I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I'm not opposed to that. The problem is I have a lot of irons in the fire with my seller clients and uh, photography business and, and, you know, all these and just being a, a husband and a, and a dad and all that. Yeah. Right. Um, and I do know sometimes buyers, they, they need to look at a lot of properties to settle on exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, I'm probably not the right agent for them because I don't, I literally can only give so much of my time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are other agents out there who can give more of their time for stuff like that. Uh, and so those agents, most of them happen to exist within my firm and, uh, I can, or, or if, uh, you know, sometimes we have situations where I can help them on like a Thursday at three Mm o'clock and a lot of other agents can't, but I can't help them on Saturday at two o'clock and other agents within our firm can. So, Sometimes it's a matter of I'll refer them to another agent in full, like this is now your client, or sometimes it's just like, hey, can you go show this for me, right? Um, and I'm happy to do that if I'm available, or they're happy to do it for me if they're available. Gotcha. Kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, so it's not, buyers don't necessarily take more time all the time, but they can take a lot more time. Gotcha. Some yeah. of the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense because, yeah. you know, you have to physically go show them. Yeah, absolutely. It's like with the selling of the property. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The marketing of it, at least from my understanding of marketing, and because I work in the industry, it's it's a one time time investment, and then well, it lasts. Yeah, it, it well, it can be a multiple time time investment, mm-hmm. but it can be done on a little bit more flexible schedule. Yeah, right. Like yeah. You, you can do this. You can work on your marketing at ten p.m. Yeah, on your laptop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah not, instead of yeah, instead physically of, be yeah, anywhere. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, is there any what else? Well, so as, as as far as the marketing is concerned, uh the 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 big difference the big diff- differentiator <laughs> that's going in. Yeah, the big differentiator. Um, you know, I'm not at all saying that other agents are bad agents, right? There's a lot of really good real estate agents. Um there are a lot of agents that have so much experience and so much knowledge. Uh, I'm on, I'm pushing year five of this. No, I'm on. Yeah. Can't even remember. The last few years have been a blur. So I'm on year four of being a real estate agent, right? So there are real estate agents who have done this decades. Mm -hmm. They have way more knowledge than I have in the back of their head that they can just rattle stuff off. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I probably am not quite as strong at that. Mm -hmm. I can always look stuff up and get you the right answer. I'm not going to give you a crap answer, right? Yeah, like yeah. You, I might not, just not be able to spit it out like right off the top of my head. But so there are agents that, that, that are much more experienced than I am, but they're not always, I don't know, a lot of agents, it's been an easy market the last few years and you can just go stick a sign in the yard and a house sells, right? Mm-hmm. Well, even though the market was super fast, um, the past few years, I never just wanted to stick a sign in the yard because I want to build a foundation of when the market slows down. Yeah. When it becomes the buyer's, market. I want to be an expert yeah. at marketing, right? Like when it becomes a buyer's market, I want to, I don't want to figure out what am I going to do now? Yeah. I already have my plan laid out. Right. So the plan is, um, number one, uh, we're going to just absolutely market the life out of your property. Right. Like, and it doesn't matter to me 
whether uh, a house is um, $100,000 or a million dollars, I'm going to put the same amount of time and effort mm-hmm. into it. Uh, my clients deserve that, right? right. Like, uh, Because even though a house is a million dollars, if you owe $980,000 on it, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not, I don't know. It's, it's, um, I don't, I, I'm not the purse police. I've never been the purse police. I've never, um, you know, tried to, tried to say, well, this person's got a ton of money they can give me. I'm going to go after them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I market the, the less expensive properties just the same as I do, um, the expensive properties. Now I do market homes a little bit more than I market land. And that's not because of, a price difference that's because of homes just give you the opportunity yeah. to do what you can do so much more photography you can do so much more videography rather than just like a vacant piece of land right yeah so it, it just gives more opportunity but so we um definitely get uh listings out on all uh i mean through through mls it's kind of a automatic that they're picked up by Zillow, Redfin, Homestuck, I'm Realtor.com, you know, that's all done somewhat automated. Mm-hmm. So once I put it on MLS, that's nothing that I do that another real estate agent won't do, right? It's it's kind of automatic. But what I will do is I will also make sure it goes out on a lot of different social media platforms, right? So a lot of people's first contact with the home that they end up buying actually comes not on like Facebook Marketplace, but you know, they'll see an Instagram reel or whatever it might be. Um, and so that's a that's another piece that we do. And we can't do that without phenomenal photography and videography, mm-hmm. right? So um, we try to do our absolute best on photography and video uh, and then also 360 virtual tours, right? Mm-hmm. So for homes, we do 360 walkthrough tours. Um, that allows especially these out-of-state buyers. Yeah to really not waste the seller's time with, uh, you know, whatever. They they might book a showing and the seller has to leave the house, take the kids out, do whatever. Okay. Well, they might not have ever booked that showing if they had a 360 walkthrough tour, right? Okay. And um, Or they might buy the property sight unseen based off the 360 walkthrough tour. Like, it gives them enough information that they feel confident. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a rarity now as opposed to what it was a few years ago. But, but you know, it's a, just another thing. So I feel like an agent that just sticks a sign in the yard is not doing all that they could for their client, right? And, and, and I advise people, if you're wanting to sell your house, ask the agent that you intend on using. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's your brother who's the agent. Mm-hmm. Ask them, what are you going to do, right? Like, what, what does this get me? Because... Because when it comes to paying a real estate agent to market your home, everyone's sort of in the same swimming pool, right? Like like uh, some agents might do it just a little bit less than another, but it's not like a dramatic amount less, mm-hmm. right? It's not like you're going to pay one agent uh, 50 bucks and another agent $10,000, right? Yeah, you're going to be within the same ballpark. So ask them, what do, what do you do, right? Like, and if they just say, well, I'm going I'm to put it on MLS and that's going to get picked up by Zillow.com and I'm going to put a sign in your yard. Mm-hmm. If that's the end of it, why would you pay them that amount when you can pay someone else the exact same amount to put it on the MLS, get it picked up by all these um, you know, online platforms, put a sign in the yard and do professional, professional photography, professional videography, 360 walkthrough tours, build the house a website do all kinds of social media marketing, Mm -hmm. you know, why would you pay the same to one, you know, that's just sticking a sign in the yard? Yeah. So. Have you ever, have you, you've never run ads for like a house, have you? you No, I've never, I've never run ads. No. Um, There's not really a, I mean, in, in what, in what way? Because, because advertising platforms, most traditional advertising platforms like newspaper or something like that, are not effective marketing tools yeah. for for selling a house. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm assuming it would have to be digital of some sort. Yeah, like yes, yeah, so you can properly target people who are trying to buy a home. Yeah, like my, I mean, I feel like I feel like the the in this area, it's it's much more valuable to have really good organic content rather than doing 
I don't see how something like I've seen real estate agents do things like um, Facebook ads, mm-hmm. things like that. But I don't know what. How do you how get that to they? target yeah. your specific mm-hmm. buyer? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it would be super effective. Yeah. Yep. But. Well. And then. Well, I guess, you know, when it comes to paying an agent, um, like I mentioned before, you're not paying that agent, you're paying the firm, mm-hmm. right? So the firm, a lot of times... Um, Does the firm set the price? No, no. Uh, the Everything is negotiable, okay. right? Like the firm's not going to say, this is the price, yeah, right? But I have the ability to know what work I'm going to put into selling your home, okay. right? And and I can on the firm's behalf say, well, this is what I'm gonna list your home for, right? Okay. This this percentage or this price or whatever it might be. Um, but I know what work I have to put into it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna be the agent who's just like, Oh, it's three percent and I'm gonna stick a sign on the yard. Mm-hmm. I've done nothing for that, right? Yeah. Um I am gonna be the agent who says, Well, it's gonna be three percent or you know whatever it is i'm just that seems to be a generalization i'm just throwing it out there um more times than not i'm i'm going to charge three percent to list a home until you got start getting into the really upper tier price points and because at that point three percent becomes a lot yeah. right so i might uh i might give a discount to you know two and a half on but this is you know a way higher priced house because I know the amount of work I'm going to put into this. And it's going to be nonstop, even from, you know, you said it was earlier, it's like a one and done. Um, we're still going to continue to put out mm-hmm. things, you know, later. If it's, if it's not selling, we're going to continue to hit this hard. Pivot the strategy. Right? Pivot the strategy, right. And make sure we get something that works for you. So I know what, uh, what effort I'm going to put into selling the home. And a lot of times, you know, I've turned down people that have, well, can you do it for this price? And honestly, no, I can't, right? Like it's, I'm going to market the snot out of your house. And if you want somebody else to list your house, let them do it. If they'll do it for a lower price, but are you going to get the same service? Mm -hmm. Are you going to get the same marketing? Are you going to get the same advice? Are you going to get the same, you know, I mean, I have, if a client needs to call me at, you know, 10 p.m., then call me at 10 p.m., right? I'm not, I'm not ever off the clock. I've been, a small business owner and an entrepreneur for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I know that there's no there's off. No off. <laughs> yeah, there's no vacation. There's no, you know, it just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, work goes with you everywhere. And I'm comfortable with that, right? Like I've, that's the lifestyle I've li- I've lived and and I'm totally fine with that. Is there anything else you want to go talk about? No, not necessarily. I'm starting to get pretty hungry. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. Because we've been going for probably an hour now. I think if I talk anymore, I'm not going to be able to talk later. Yeah. So I'm I have a lot of more questions actually. Yeah, well we, we they're, they're so, the cool thing is we have we can do this again. Yeah, they're so specific that yeah. I don't think they're gonna Well, we'll get to them another time. Yeah. We'll do it we'll do more of these that are more Right. Like opening the, the rabbit holes. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. But I'm good if you're good. That yeah, that, that clarified for me a lot of things about just what it is you actually do, right? And Yeah. Now, I may go back and look at some of this and be like, oh, that's cringy. Maybe I shouldn't say that that way. And we might have to make some yeah. edits. Well, that's, but... that's fine. Yeah, it's all it's all edit- editable. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I'm good if you are. Yeah. I want to get oh, food. This camera's not recording. That one? I'm kidding. Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> we have that angle, but you got to outro us. You got to outro us. Yeah. Oh, I do? Yeah. What do I? What do I oh. So... Thanks to Jade for being here with me today, asking some good questions and talking about everything real estate that we can think of to talk about uh, at this point in time. So if any of you guys have any questions on your own uh, that we didn't cover that maybe you want to see covered in the future, or maybe you just want to ask me directly and I can just answer you directly, um, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can, maybe if it's a benefit to a lot of people, we can you know talk about that at a later date and time, or if it's something that's only pertinent to you, uh, feel free to put it down here and, and I'll be glad to talk. We can, put your, we can put your your email in the description of YouTube. Yeah, or and we'll, yeah, okay. Yeah. Email in description. His email will be down below. Okay. 
Thank you, Jade. <laughs> so again, thanks again to Jade for not only uh, talking about this with me today, but also setting up this uh, podcast of Jade. If, if you ever uh, list your house with, with me, Jade's the guy doing the video and he does a phenomenal job with it. And uh, yeah, so appreciate it. That's okay. okay. That's it. That's a cut. Okay, cut.